Happy almost New Year, Eric. <laughs> Happy almost New Year to you as well, Zach. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. Of course, you guys, we're recording this uh, roughly uh, 10 o'clock on, on, <laughs> yeah, on Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's when we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting ahead early, yeah. yeah no, uh, we're doing this on uh, New Year's Eve. Um, so, but anyway, hey guys, it's Zach, and welcome to episode uh, 54 of Let's Play Chrono Cross. In the last part, we became cats. We stopped Fargo's cheating ways and, uh, you know, got access to the Grand Slam and naturally learned that Nikki needs to learn the Song of Marbula to help revive it and such. And, oh yeah, and of course, um, you know, we learned that uh, Nikki is Fargo's son. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> the captain gave me the okay to let you through. But I'm warning you, you might not make it out alive. Um, yeah, we're pretty tough guys. Well, I think we'll be fine. Um, yeah, no, and, uh, <laughs> before, um, Eric actually thought that Nikki was a girl, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, with that hair and the makeup and whatnot, and, you know, with these graphics, it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Same. <laughs> well, more than that in a moment. Okay, so what I'm doing down here is, uh, right here is Janice. She's the character that I was talking about that you can recruit um, I th um, a few episodes ago. <laughs> um, and Okay, so the way you do recruit her is um, you, you actually um, go into this ring, and we do, you fight as monsters against her monsters. And um, after three rounds, uh, if you beat her on all three rounds, then she'll join your party for some reason. So this is why it's great to have a sprig round, because of the double gang list. Um, uh, the, my, my play for Fun File, I didn't know that at first, because around this point I had um, Norris in my party. I had to play Sprig with Norris. So when I got here, like I didn't have like any strong monsters that I've fought recently on there. I just had like old monsters that. You know, I got, like, when I was still Surge, or, you know, when I was playing a Surge. So, yeah, it, it was kind of frustrating in the end. I just gave up, and then later on, that's when I learned that you need Sprig because of the doppelganger list. So, um, you don't have to recruit um, Janice right now. You can do this at any time, um, you know, after you leave. But, um, you know, if you want to, you can do it right now, which is why I said she's just said going to the bend of time first. So... Anyway, so we're here to meet the Sage, who basically we're kind of doing the same thing that we did um, with uh, in the Temple of Vortex, only we're not like going through the same door. We're um, actually trying that we're actually doing more of a puzzle here. So, um, which I'm screwing up right now. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Three. <coughs> Yes? What is it? Why are you following me? <laughs> As you can see, I'm quite busy. Yes, yes, I can see that. I do not have time for a game of tag. Mm, yeah, but we want to know where the Dead Sea is. Oh, actually, we want to know how to get into the Dead Sea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you wish to enter the Dead Sea? Do you realize humans have stolen our land along with our legendary treasure? Humans will do anything for profit, no matter what the cost. The demi-humans aboard this ship are living proof. Mm-hmm, I see. We've lost all sense of pride with no dreams of tomorrow. For tomorrow. <laughs> for tomorrow. <laughs> One of those words. <laughs> We just cling to the mercy of humans every day. Why must we demi-humans lend a hand to humans? What will you do if I refuse? Will you go as so far as as far as using brute force? Mm, yeah. Okay. So if you say let's talk it over, then he'll be like, you'll never get anywhere with that kind, with that attitude or something like that. Um, and then you gotta talk to him again. Um, to, to actually progress forward, so I guess kids, the moral of the lesson is, or the moral of the story is, always go the violent route. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Then prepare yourselves for my broom. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So as you can see, we're finding the sage, and his name is White. He's not really that tough. Um, so just use your, you know, black elements, and uh, he, you know, took it down pretty quickly. So. 
With that said, I think it's a good time to talk about all the stories that I have to tell. Um, first of all, uh, Phoenix, since I know you'll be commenting on this, how was your Christmas? And what did you get? <laughs> um, <laughs> second of all, uh, on to what I got. Um, I, if you don't mind, Eric, I, I, I'm going to start off first. No, uh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, uh, my parents, uh, or my mom gave my dad and I matching pajamas, pants. It was actually kind of funny. Um, and uh, I did get, like, it's not really a pajama shirt. It's more like a t-shirt, but not a t-shirt. Kind of weird. It's like, it's like it looks like it's a pajama shirt in a sense, or more of a t-shirt. But then it, like, uses some, like, very comfortable fabric. It's kind of like what um, pajamas use. So I, I'm not really sure, like, what to call it. But anyway, you know, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty good. And then I um, also got a new sweater from both of them and new slippers from them. And then I got read on DVD from one of my best friends, um, which is actually um, a pretty um, fun movie. I at first actually I um, I read the title and I thought it was like a really old movie that came out like years ago, um, like in the 90s, because it starred um, Bruce Willis. Oops, I meant to use elements now, but oh well. Um, um, but uh, uh, but yeah. So um, I so I just said, you know what? Let's watch it. So my parents and I, we watched it on Christmas Day, um, well, at night, so going into Boxing Day there. And then um, we, we we all loved it. It was very funny. Um, it, I guess it's kind of um, the same as uh, The Expendables, because that's what I thought of was The Expendables uh, when I watched it. But I see it's, like, better. I, I think it's better than The Expendables. Not to say The, the Expendables was actually bad, um, but this one that's, like, Okay. Uh. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, I guess that Kamehameha attack uh, <laughs> was pretty powerful. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that was unexpected. I wasn't paying attention to Haro's HP, but I didn't think she was down that low. Okay then. Um, right. What was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> About the movie? How you thought it was, uh... Oh, right, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, right, uh, all right, so yeah, it, it was better than The Expendables, cause, just simply because of, like, the dialogue. Like, in The Expendables, the dialogue is kind of written to just be one-off jokes, but in Red, the dialogue is actually kind of written to continue the story or carry the story um, further, so... But more or less, it's basically, like, the same. It's just, like, your generic 80s action movie. Like, I remember at the beginning, it's like... Um, uh, oh, Eric, uh, I, are you going to see the movie? Because I don't want to, like, spoil, like, the very beginning for you, but... Um, I don't know when I would be able to, but possibly some point, I don't know. <laughs> but spoiling the beginning's not too bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Um, but if you don't mind... <laughs> Uh, you're fine. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, so, you know, like, at the beginning, there's, like, one of that kind of execution style where it, it's just, like, um, I would say, like, an army. Oh, wait, they, there's just, like, a bunch of guys. They're all, like, walking forward towards, like, their target, basically, firing machine guns. And not once did anyone have to reload. They were freaking, like, firing their guns <laughs> for, like, you know, what seemed like uh, a couple of minutes. And it's like, yeah... And you didn't need to reload? Like, how much ammo is in those clips? Like, <laughs> there's freaking, like, you know, ten guys all firing the machine guns. <laughs> anyway, you know, it's stuff like that that was just, like, really hilarious. It's just, like, you know, it's an 80s... Well, I mean, it's not an 80s movie. It was made, like, in 2010. Which actually brings up a good point. Um, like, so, um, I didn't... I uh, Honestly, I did not know of this movie or I did not remember this movie um so when it got to this one part which I distinctly remember in the trailer it's that point where um, Bruce Willis was like walking got out of a cop car and was walking and the cop car was spinning and as he walks there was a shot where the car just barely misses his leg 
he like just got out of the way in time. And once I saw that shot, I was like, I thought of the trailer because I remember that from the trailer, and I was like, oh, it's this movie. Okay, great. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was a really fun movie. Recommend checking it out, anybody, because um, honestly, I mean, it, it was just fantastic. Um, very, very fun movie. Very great. And then uh, the last thing I got was the Metal Gear Solid HD collection um, from uh, my family does the Secret Santa thing, so uh, you know. That's what I got, and I uh, haven't played that yet, but, uh, you know, I did see a re review, um, well, German John's review uh, of uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, and that looked really fun, so I figured, you know what, I feel like playing it, so uh, I just asked for that and got it, and, so. and that's pretty much all I got, so, Eric, how was your Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I guess, in Ocean City, with cold and fun and whatnot, and unfortunately being, uh, sick... So, it's yeah. always fun over Christmas. <laughs> but, oh well. I uh, got to, you know, see a bunch of family uh, on Christmas Day. So that was good, at least. And, um, yeah. That's a, uh, well, I get that. A decent amount of gifts, including a couple of HD game collections. Uh, cool. Got, yeah. Some Blu rays. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> well, what, what blue race? Uh, bl uh, blue race did you get again? Oh, of course, this is a boss battle, by the way. Yep. So you get a star, gold sticky star. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and naturally, um, Sprig doesn't get uh, an element slot because of the special character thing. Not sure why Harl doesn't though. Yeah. Make sure everyone's with you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Hmm. I sense that you were quite serious about entering the Dead Sea. And that there's no malice in your attacks. <laughs> Even though you just sent me to hell. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Could it be that you are carrying the burden of fate for the human race? No, for all life forms. Yes, yes, I'm Goku. <laughs> <laughs> then let me give you this Nimbus Cloud. Oh, wait. Rogue Series, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you will be able to put it to good use. But just remember, opening a new gate also brings forth a new misfortune. I got that from a fortune cookie. <laughs> Do not forget. Huh? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a short intention spam. What? What am I not supposed to forget? I said, don't forget. <laughs> but I have a short intention span. <laughs> anyway, Link's received the Fiddler Crab, which we will need to use at the Dead Sea. <laughs> it's a key item. There's an area near the Dead Sea where the tides are different. Use that item there. Nature will take over from there. Mm, That's okay. using there twice. Really yeah, I know. It, it, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, <laughs> I'm here. I find you here. Where are the other dogs going? I'm not wearing hockey pants. Where is she? <laughs> you know the legendary song of Marbule, right? I want you to teach me the song, please. Why do humans always have to be so selfish? It sounds like you have throat cancer. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have throat cancer. That song only has a place in the hearts of demi-humans. Why would I teach you the song? I really asked me. Here, I see that she has not given up. But it's only because she asked me to. Oh, I mean, it's not because you asked me to. <laughs> I wouldn't do it otherwise. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a very successful, you know, singer and everything. I also have a great interest in that song. A beautiful song originating from a beautiful island. Wow. <coughs> oh, my gosh. How did Cushion yeah. Bale, like, not lose his voice from that? Oh, my... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not 100% sure if I'll be able to pull that off. 
But if it means I can save someone through my song. <laughs> Here was once a man just like you. <laughs> Who? Fargo. My father. Ah, so you were his son. <laughs> I guess history does repeat itself. I had high hopes for that man. I hoped that he would one day tear down the wall between demi-humans and humans. But look at us now. The walls seem even higher. Please, don't speak up badly of my father. No one understands the pain he's suffering. He's going... Wait, no. <laughs> no one understands the pain and suffering he's going through. Yeah, see, it was like, no one understand, understands the pain he's suffering. And I was like, he's going, how does that, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even though he's built up this life place, he screams in sorrow alone within his dark, deep self. Because he's the hero who Gotham needs, or deserves, but not the one it needs right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I can hear him. He screams of despair. Which no one else can hear, or wants to hear. So you can hear him too. I thought it was the only one he was keeping up all night. <laughs> all in a way like that. <laughs> I beg of you, please. I bet if my father hears that song. I am sorry, but I have other areas of the ship I must mop. But. Well, I hum myself a song. <laughs> there you go. I saw the way you fought back there. You had the true makings of a ninja. Can I call you Robin? <laughs> I just, I, I really need a partner. Because, you know, I mean, all I have is, a, is this, uh, you know, 90 year old butler, and he's. I mean, it just gets very lonely. You know, down in this cave all day. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for tough guys like you. It would be an honor if we could talk inside my ship. Well, you know, um, we're kind of on this long journey. I mean, we gotta go to the Dead Sea and stuff. I mean, you didn't really get a chance for us to say no, but, you know, okay, I guess we'll just go Seriously. to your ship, you know? It's just like, alright, you're coming to my ship. See you then. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, <exactly. laughs> so that actually brings up a good point. I'm surprising I'm surprised in the Dark Knight Rises they didn't make, you know, the you know, you can't get rid of a bomb joke. <laughs> like they could have <laughs> easily referenced that, you know. Like I don't know, maybe a cop bringing that up before Batman takes it away or something, like, you know. <laughs> well, what do you think? What you're gonna do with this bomb? It's like, well, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> and the Batman just takes it. Yeah, I mean, seriously, you know, it would have been cool. It would have been funny. I, w I would have enjoyed the movie much more. I would have been like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and by the way, um, I, I guess in the last episode, um, the uh, I, I said that you could come to Nikki's boat as a human, or yeah, not as cats. You can't do that. Well, that was weird. Is it just me, or did the orientation of the left kind of change there for a moment? Yeah, it, like, turned or something. Yeah, I don't remember seeing that before. That was actually kind of weird. Uh, but it was only for, like, that one moment, and then it just went back to being sideways again. Or, I don't know, whatever. But, um... Yeah, anyway, so, um... Yeah, I said you could come here as humans. Technically, you can't do that until now. Um... So, I guess it was kind of like a spoiler, but, uh, yeah. So, so basically, like, you need to go there as um, a cat so that you see the scene for Nikki. Uh, you know, I guess, I, I'm not sure if it, like, starts off the quest for Nikki to um, get the song or not, but, yeah. Anyway, you can only go to the ship as a cat before this moment. So, we're going down here. Oh, wow, man. Rockin', I knew you'd come. Why did I change my voice? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, now that we're all here, here's my idea. How would an 
How would you all like to save on an island with a song? <laughs> you want to do this one? I, uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. I guess I'll do it. Think before you speak, Nikki. Yeah, that's right. I'm using the Batman voice now. <laughs> you better be. Batman, you gotta be Batman out of your mind. <laughs> No, I'm serious. According to Irene, the island of Marbu is infested with monsters. Their only weakness is a demi-human song that the sage knows. While well, he's per well, we perform our gig near the island. These people will exterminate all the monsters. That's the plan. Of course, you'll help out, right? Well, I don't know. You see, because I mean, we're kind of we're on this long mission about uh, we gotta go into the Dead Sea and. Find out what Lynx did to the dragoons in this world, and then, you know, we gotta somehow get back to another world and get Serge's body back, and, you know, stop Lynx and everything, you know, so, I mean, it's a really long journey, I don't know, what, what do you think, Eric? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah, nah, uh, I don't know. But, you know, I mean, it is a good cause, so... I'm actually, I'm really curious, because I don't know what happens if you say no, because I've always said, of course. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Should I do it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it's a tough, tough one. <laughs> oh, I guess I'll try it. But you're my only hope! <laughs> I have no one else to turn to. You're my Besides, only hope. you owe the sage a favor, don't you? Please. Oh, okay, that's all? Well, Alright, I guess we'll do it anyway then. <laughs> I shall gather all the demi humans on this ship to play backup instruments. <laughs> By the way, if you said, of course, you'll help, then they could be like, yeah, I knew you'd help, kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, well, that was actually rather interesting. See, I never selected no, so. Yeah, okay, I guess we'll just do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might have, like, come back with, like, an option, like, are you sure you don't want to help? Like... <laughs> yeah, and just keep looping forever. But we yeah. need you! No. But we need you! No. But we need you! No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fine, who needs you anyways? But you just said, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it would be difficult for... Humans to play the proper notes for our song. <laughs> but don't we need to bring the ship over to Marvel? Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna use that voice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Just screw all these voices. I can't, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> our ship's chains to the Zelbas, you know. <laughs> and plus, uh, oh, plus we have a contract with that Fugu guy. We can't just leave. Yes, I know. I don't intend to go without our ship alone. <laughs> Wouldn't want to disappoint our fans aboard the Zelvis. The only <laughs> hurdle left to clear now is how to convince my fa I mean, Fargo. What was it you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder why he doesn't want to say that his father is Fargo. Hmm. Like, why keep that a secret? I don't, I don't get it. I'll leave that up to you, Irene's. We have to concentrate on setting up the gig. Hey, you know, this is starting to sound interesting. It's almost like a test to see how far we can take our ship. <laughs> so you're with me on this, Mickey? Woohoo! That's right! <laughs> Great, let's, uh, let's get everyone- what? <laughs> what? Sure, <laughs> <laughs> Great, let's get everyone ready for rehearsal. Or, let's get ready for rehearsal, everybody. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> yeah, same difference. Yeah. Thank you for your support, Sage. <laughs> I trust you will put on a good gig. <laughs> By the way, uh, I can't do the voice, so. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I can't. I can't do Master Oaks's voice, but um, or well, you know, from the. A bridge there, but <laughs> were there yeah. any lovely ladies there? <laughs> yeah. 
Anybody doing a Rubik's? <laughs> Yeah. Well, look at them skimpy outfits on those background dancers. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. We seem to have involved you in quite a task. Task. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird, like... I know. <laughs> if there is a anything... At all I can do, I will be happy to join you. <laughs> happy? Join you. Happy? <laughs> what? Happy. I will be happy to. Uh, yeah. I will be happy to join. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Even though we'll never use her. Harry's joined your party. 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 Anyway, confirm. Um. Which actually brings up a good story, which I'll start half now and half in the next episode. Um, speaking of which, I need to check on time. What's, what am I up to? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, then. Um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's been quite pretty long. So, um, well, that's all we can do on the Zelda's at the, um, right now. We uh, we can't do anything um, else, because it's, it's going to take a while to uh, save Marbule. So, we'll come back to this later. Um, so... You know, that's all we can do now. But uh, anyway, yeah, so I was on... There was a point in the um, story which I was very confused about a while ago. And so, for um, to, just to get help on it, um, I went to this uh, forum, which I'll throw up on an, in an annotation. Um, and, uh, you know, naturally got that all sorted out. So, I was browsing other topics, and uh, a lot of people, I guess... You know, did not really like um, having so many characters. Like, uh, according to um, some people, when they were developing Chrono Cross, they, um, they for, somehow they liked the idea. Whoa, major lag. Um, somehow they liked the idea of having just like anybody um, that uh, that can, uh, uh, liking anybody can save the world. Like, that's why there's so many party members to recruit. There's over 45 party members. Well, actually, no, there is 45 party members. Not over it. Um, yeah, they just like that idea, just anybody can save the world, and, um, uh, a lot of fans didn't really like that, because, I guess, I don't know, Eric, maybe you can confirm this, but what, what the forum said, um, or the topic, was that in Chrono Trigger, they, uh, had, um, only a select number of characters, like, a small number of characters that you could recruit, so, like, characters were more focused, and you could, um, I guess, uh, uh, you know, that certain characters, they wanted to save the world kind of thing. Maybe yeah. that's what I heard anyway. Yeah, there's much fewer. I think there's like maybe seven characters total you can have in Chrono Trigger. Oh wow, so. seven. Okay, so so then that that was it. Like they 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 only wanted specific characters to save the world. I guess. I guess um, or to be part of the story, like, not just anybody. Okay, yeah, because that, that's what I heard, and I, and I, I, th I never really thought about it before, but I thought it was kind of interesting. I was like, yeah, okay, I suppose. Because I mean, I mean, there's so many characters in Chrono Cross. It's kind of like, well, yeah, all right, you can join the party. I'm not going to use you, so <laughs> it's really like I don't see the why they did that, but yeah. Well, anyway, okay, so we accomplished quite a lot in this part. I don't want to make this too long. Uh, we fought the sage. We got the fiddler crab, and um, you know we. We're, I guess we have agreed to help um, uh, <laughs> Nikki. Well, sort of agreed to help Nikki save Marbule. <laughs> so, um, we're forced into. <laughs> yeah, we're just kind of forced into it. I, I really honestly did not expect that because I always say that, of course, I'll help. So, you know. But, yeah, well, all right, that was, was kind of cool. So, um, in the next episode, we will finally go to Death's Door and use the Fiddler's Crab. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys then.